welcome back everybody um we're now in part two i uh, apologize for not uh saying goodbye <laughs> I, I i don't think it matters but um yeah i decided you know what one hour is a very very long time and uh most of you would probably not care for most of this but um i decided to do a part two on the pre-flight because i am dragging it out um and i do want it i am doing it because i want to give you as much information as possible just so you know pretty much everything about this aircraft at least when it comes to SOPs um, so our next scan after the FMS that we've done is to do the glare shield scan so we'll start with the left side again because we are one person but we should cover two people we're gonna do both sides um, um, we're gonna do the entire glare shield in fact normally um, by the time you're at this point um, the pilot not flying or the or your co-pilot in this case should be back um, whoever is doing the walk around should be back and start at around the same time as you are with your pre-flight checks and these are this is where um, it really gets combined but um yeah we're gonna go here um here's a little tip for you if you do want your yoke to be hidden just select this to off and you'll see that both yokes actually do hide um i'll keep it on for now if i do decide to turn it off that's yeah. I honestly don't know what this push button does or what this slider does um, have no idea what that's supposed to do but if you want to change the PFD brightness you can same thing with the navigation display and the I think this terrain so the smaller knob is the terrain and the weather and then the bigger knob is the actual screen itself and um, this is I think reversed in the in Airbus 320s and all that not sure if this is actually the case in, in the real plane um, if they're actually like this as well or if they've accidentally turned it around. I haven't really looked in, into it uh, in that detail yet. Next, like we've discussed before with the FMS, um, this is set as required. Normally it's set to nav because we're planning on using nav mode. And once we arrive in Leipzig and we're using the ILS, this will be switched to ILS mode. Flight directors, you want to make sure that both are on. Um, there's no reason for it to be off until after a landing. And if you do want it to use FPV, which again would not be used for takeoff really, you could switch it to FPV, which is a momentary switch. But we're, and to deselect it, you would switch it up back to FPV once again. Here you can set your, des set your decision height if you wanted to. Some airlines or some pilots like to set their decision height to let them know that they're at a certain altitude. Um, so if you wanted to set your decision height, I, I don't know if it goes in the thousands to be honest. I don't think it does. I'm not going to try it because I'm afraid that it will take forever to scroll back down. Um, but just keep it blanked if you're not going to use decision height for your departure um, which is fine FPA we don't need so that's all off and dashed uh, set these mode selectors as you desire this is all up to you same thing with this but what usually is set here for the map is constraints um, so I'm going to go and select constraints on my side or keep it as is you want to make sure that these displays are armed and if they aren't or at least on if they aren't um, you know that it has to do with one of these switches here. So you want to make sure, as we did uh, did cover earlier, make sure that these are all switched to on. At least one system, one pitch trim system, I believe, is required, and the ATS system, of course, as well. There are two big keys to have this f actual MCP work. Um, speed, we're going to keep it 100 for now. This is going to control our V2 speed as well as our initial climb speed, um, and we'll get into the details of that later. I'll do to select. So I'm going to select 100. Actually, no. Um, we checked our, um, sorry, we checked our SID. I'm going to show you guys that right now. Um, so you guys can see here our SID. Um, blah, blah, blah. Tells us that our initial climb is going to be flight level 90. Wait, didn't I earlier read that as 70? I must be blind. Um, it's actually since 90. So yeah, like I've predicted, flight level 90. Um, is our initial climb for today's flight and so we can enter that already that's pretty much confirmed if ATC would tell us nope um, it's something different today then obviously switch it then but for now um, our SID says 9,000 feet so we're gonna put that in our pre-select if you haven't gotten clearance yet um, this is a little little helpful tool for pilots if you haven't got your clearance yet make sure to select your your expected initial climb plus 100 feet that will let you know, hey, IFR clearance have not, has not been given or any clearance has not been given. And so that means we need, still need to get it. And once you're done with clearance and the altitude is confirmed, select it back to your altitude. Heading select, 
Um, we can set this to our runway heading as well. There's a nice little feature that I want to go over now. So, okay, okay, there's two features here I want to mention. Um, this we'll go over in a second. You just saw a preset. We'll mention, well, I'll mention this in a second once we actually do need to use it. Um, for altitude select, I'm sure most of you know if you push it or pull it, I mean, you'll set, you'll switch between thousands and 100 um, increments. Um, here, pushing this, there's only a push function will actually set your current heading, which is very, very helpful. Something I wish Boeing definitely had. Um, so s pushing it will set your current heading that you're currently heading at, or, or your airplane is currently facing in. Um, if you slight see this little indication, I hope you guys see that because I'm I'm running a 4K, so the so the indications here might be a little bit small for you. Um, but if you select that, you can select between 15 and normal uh, bank. You want to make sure that's set to normal. And we're going to select our heading to our initial heading um, according to our runway. In fact, there is actually okay. So you would want to select set your heading to your initial heading, but I'm I'm looking here that. Our SID wants us pretty much once we're at one DME of um, our localizer here, it wants us to turn left to 255. And that is exactly what we'll do. Um, so, what I'm going to do, because it's pretty much one DME, I'm going to go ahead and select 225 as our initial heading. So, go back to flight plan, and we're going to set 225 in our heading. So, 225. That's set. And so you can see here that our heading, which is here, set to 225, which is again is this initial turn. If we check our chart once again, let me let me look at it first before I actually confirm this information. Yeah, I wanna I wanna check something here. 10935. So I'm gonna select this to view R. I'm gonna see if I can select um 10935. I can. Okay. I'm gonna select this to 10935. I'm not gonna set a course because I don't need it. And what this is going to tell me, at least it should, I'm looking where, I, yeah, I can see it here. So here you can see that I selected 10935. You can see, I actually see the DME, um, uh, DME of it. So we're currently 0.1 nautical mile away from it. If we check our charts. Again, you can see that our initial turn to 225 is actually 1 DME of 10935. And that's pretty much what I've done. But what I've programmed here is set it, set up my view art. So I set this to view art. I've manually tuned my view art to 10935. Course to me is not important. And then as soon as I as soon as we reach 1 DME, we're expected to turn left. You can also simply not do this. This is only done for reference, um, because we ha do have an FMS and we do have nav mode. So we would we would definitely engage nav mode for this flight, which we in fact can do now, and it will arm. So you'll see nav blue. And uh, we will use nav mode. However, in case nav mode were to ever fail or would cause something or would be unreliable, we can, of course, go back to our um, actual instruments. Or, or not, not our actual instruments, our backup instruments. That is set there. Our vertical speed ke is set to kept to zero. And uh, autopilots, obviously, for obvious reasons, should be off. We'll do the same scan on the captain side, uh, co-pilot side. So we'll set whatever he wants to have set, and we'll keep this as is. Um, in fact, I'm actually I'm going to set airport on his side because he's the pilot not flying. He's the pilot monitoring. So I'm going to set airport on his side. So once the uh, glare shield is complete, we would do the lateral scan or lateral console scan. Uh, everybody would do it. Um, on our side, we'll see. You can see here the. Uh, the hydraulic ram air turbine handle. This is a, rav, uh, a rat handle, or a ram air turbine handle. So yeah, a rat handle. I don't think this is simulated because the last time I don't want to push it, pull it now in case they actually did simulate it and I'm actually screwed. Um, but in the this is um, this would actually deploy the rat manually, um, and you want to make sure that's uh, set in. So that is that is honestly I don't know what it would look like if it's pulled out, but I, I'm pretty sure it would look much different than that. That is checked. Um, oxygen test you would do again in the real plane. The oxygen test is conducted a bit more complicated, in a bit more complicated fashion. Um, but because the simulator simulator is a bit limited, we're just going to press the button to actually test it, and you'll hear, actually hear the system test a little bit. All right, lights set as required. You want to make sure that the console lights is actually not simulated, unfortunately. It's set service interphone should be uh, uh, no lights and mic selected should be set to boom. 
if you're using the oxygen mask, you would set this to oxygen, but we're not using oxygen mask, so there's no no need to set it to oxy. No no lights should be here on the uh, switching panels, and uh, everything else here should be fine. And this is, should be set to normal. It looks like it's set to flat override, but this is the normal position. Terrain on ND is required, but we don't need require it today. And uh, we'll go to the PFD. Brightnesses are fine. You want to verify 9,000 is set. Flight director 1 is checked. Nav is blue. Out to the blue. Manual thrust currently. Speed is 100. That's fine. Everything is fine there. Now I want to test something here. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. So yeah. And everything else here looks good as well. Uh, check the altimeter. So our current altimeter here is 1014. Um, so we'll set that. Oops, that's the wrong one. We'll set 1014. One, um, two. Now these two are synced. I'm not sure if that's like the same thing in the real plane. I doubt it. Um, but those are synced, and it's nothing with the options, at least not that I know of. Um, last, at least as of version 1.02, I did not see an option for unsyncing these. So that said, one zero one four on all three. You want to verify that your GMT is checked, and uh, everything is reset when it comes to Chrono and all that jazz. Another thing that's not simulated right now. Um, is the uh, the standby attitude indicator? You would actually pull this or cage it and set it pr appropriately. You can see that there's currently a negative pitch, which is obviously not correct. Um, so you would actually want to cage this, but again, it's not simulated as of now. Don't want to see any lights here, so that's checked. Anti skid system is has already been checked and set to on. Auto brake system is currently off. Flat position is set to zero slats and zero flaps, which is checked. Um, Ecamm page or Ecamm status is fine. It's only left for cabin. It's not closed. That's totally normal. And we'll check the engine indications. Now again, every engine has its own indications. Pratt and Whitney have have Eper, um, and I think it, I think Eper's exhaust pressure ratio, and uh, GE engines don't have Eper. They have N1, UTN1 up here. So um, I'm, it's good that I'm using Pratt and Whitney because Pratt and Whitney have um, ha always have a gauge more, and it's always good to cover one extra gauge rather than one less gauge. So gauges here you want to check is you want to make sure that the EPR is approximately at one on both engines. EGT obviously at the outside air temperature. N10, N20. Fuel usage should be reset or set to zero and fuel flow should be at zero. Oil pressure should be zero and your oil quantities should be at, at least 11 quarts, which it is. And um, it did not say in the FCOM how much more you want per in uh, per uh, per hour, but I can assume because they, these are older engines that it's definitely more than 0 0.5 per hour. Um, so just just make sure that you're at, le at at least 11 quarts, which is checked on both systems or both engines in that matter. Next, we check our TRP. I think that's the thrust ratio panel. Tooth holder air temperature should be checked, um, which is currently our outside air temperature, which is fine. Thrust reduction set is fine. We're going to set this either to toga or flex, depending on what we're planning with today. We're planning with flex temperature, so go ahead and set the flex, and you'll see that there's already a flex temperature value, but we're not going to set this yet because we don't have the performance calculations for it. We're going to do that later with the EFP. EFB, sorry, not EFP. So make sure to set to flex or toga, depending on what you're planning with today. Um, trust me when I say that when your flex temperature, when you are capable of doing a flex temperature and your b-speeds are like 170 trust me you can use flex temperature this airplane has powerful engines having a speed of 170 in this airplane is normal um so i've seen a few streams and a few videos where people were like 170 that's incredibly high um let me just set toga instead don't worry about it um, um if i think i'm pretty sure the uh calculation here is good enough that if to if uh flex temperature would not be enough or your flaps wouldn't be enough um, the uh, performance calculator would actually tell you that you should consider um, increasing your flap setting or um, switching to toga. The time you would use toga, um, maybe in the good thing to note this as well, a time to use toga is um, if you're going to be departing in standing water, slush, or in heavy thunderstorms or in wind shear conditions. If you're going to be if you're going to be flying in those conditions or taking off in those conditions, consider using toga instead of flex temperature. In fact, don't just consider it, actually do it. Um, you should definitely set toga in either of those conditions or plan with toga. If you're not um, and you are, aren't are too heavy, 
or if you think you can make it fle make flex temperature, which you definitely will be, don't don't trust me on that. Uh, make sure to plan with flex temperature because the goal here is to preserve the life of the engines as much as possible. Next thing we would do is set our landing elevation here. It's a little bit hidden, uh, especially on my camera angle, but it's a bit hidden here. You would set your landing elevation to your current uh, to your origin uh, elevation. So that would mean East Midlands. And uh, East Midlands elevation is currently 306 feet. So we're going to set this to 300. Now you're probably wondering, what if the elevation is, let's say, 350 or 340 or 370? There are increments of 50 here. And let's say if it's if it's at 370, um, always try to set your elevation lower than what the actual elevation is. So it's, make sure to set this elevation knob lower than what the actual is. Um, you always want a, your pressure, from what I've understood, you, you always want your cabin pressure to be lower um, in pressure than uh, the outside pressure. You don't want it to be higher because then your doors um could if if the procedure isn't properly done the doors could um just fly open and obviously cause damage so keep that in mind next thing we already checked the indications we want to make sure the indications are normal and we would do a a landing gear warning test brake fans are not required so yeah a landing gear warning test um you want to hold this down and as, um, as soon as you do the warning test, you want to observe that the down arrow here illuminates. And then you'll hear the continuous re repetitive chime. There it is. Very simple. Cancel. And um, the next thing is the position detection. You want to set this to either system. So on a odd day, you would select system 1, which makes sense. And on an even day, select it to system 2. It is currently an odd day, so we're going to keep it on system 1. It's currently the 13th of uh, August. Not Friday though. <laughs> so, uh, system one is perfectly fine. You also want to verify that any lights here are extinguished. All of these lights should be extinguished. There should not be any lights. That is checked. Next, we're going to the pedestal. Uh, we already pretty much confirmed all this information, all this stuff here. So, we don't need to double check that really. So, we'll go right down to the pedestal. Set your frequencies, your comms as required. Make sure this your mic is selected as you desire and it's like your. Um, your uh, uh, receivers as you desire. There's currently no push button that I know of to actually turn them on. I don't know if the real airplane are on by default as well, but there's currently only a volume setting. And then you can select the mic as you desire. Same thing with ADFs. If you do require an ADF, set those as desired. Make sure your transponder is set to standby. If you want to do a TCAS test, press the TCAS test button and uh, you'll see the. You'll hear and see the. Uh, traffic indication here on the VSI. And that's what you want to hear. Alright, so once that is done, set your... If you have clearance, which at this point we wouldn't have clearance just yet, um, we'll get clearance. Um, we're not online right now, but um, we're going to say we got clearance. So you would actually get clearance once we're done with the pedestal here. Um, but um, I set my ATC code now because I'm not going to get clearance. I'm not online. So if the, if the captain is the pilot flying, you would make sure you set this to system one, and if the uh, co-pilot, so the first officer is the pilot flying, you would set this to system two, um, and you would do that per flight. Currently, we're the, the captain and and the pilot flying, so we'll keep this to system one. Um, next, you want to make sure that these lights are illuminated, and make sure that the dis uh, display brightnesses are set all the way up. Looks like this doesn't really work. Oh no, it does. Okay, there we go. Um, clear the message. I'm going to go and clear the message and you can see that you can memo here is checked and make sure that all is good. Flood air temperature, fuel t uh, tank temperature, fuel on board, all that stuff is there. We'll go down to the trim. Make sure rudder trim is zero. Aileron trim is also close to zero or neutral and that's all good. Interphone, we'll go and keep that in and we'll set, you can set brightness as you wish. I'm going to go and keep it as this. Weather radar currently is on off, is in off, but if you've seen some of the previews, it actually looks really good. We're currently working on it, so you want to make sure it's off. Um, off here as well. I think it's off. Yeah, it, it was off. And we're gonna go, I'm going to go and set a tilt of 4 degrees up. 
Um, I know the weather radar doesn't work now, but this is a good habit to keep in mind right now. So for takeoff, we're going to set a tilt of 40 degrees up. EHF-2, this, this is something you as a pilot flying, or not pilot flying, but you as the uh, as a co-pilot would not really manage. Um, but we're going to go do it for him now. So we're going to set his stuff just the same as ours for convenience and then set his ADF as required as well. Once that is done, we would now at this point, if we're running on VATSIM, Pilot Edge, uh, whatever network, POSCON, or if you're using um, built-in ATC or an external program, whatever it is, this time you would request some clearance. Uh, once you get the clearance, you'd obviously inf update your information, so that would be your transponder, maybe frequencies as well, and your initial altitude or anything, anything else that they say that you can expect. Even if your runway hasn't changed, so if they say, okay, your runway changed, and you have it planned for the secondary flight plan, you can activate your secondary flight plan and re-plan for that. So this would be a perfect time if your secondary flight plan would be required, the perfect time to activate it, because if you already have your performance configures in, and you're going to activate the secondary flight plan, the, the chances, normally, your performance calculations would completely reset because you've, you've uh, selected a completely new runway. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, this is why another reason why to not do the performance calculations until you get clearance. But it's, al it's also more realistic because you wouldn't have the load sheet um, by that time. You can't get, the, in real life, you can't get the load sheet before you're done loading the airplane itself. Just, just, I know. It's just little little details that I go into. Um, some of you might think I'm crazy, especially for the tutorial being one hour, the first part, and probably this part, at least currently, at its current stage, is around 25 minutes long. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, you guys definitely probably think I'm crazy at this point. Once the uh, departure brief, not correct, sorry, once the uh, IFR clearance has been requested, you'd now do the departure briefing. So you would uh, brief everything that has been cleared. You would. Uh, Double confirm all the information here. You would check the flight plan with your pilot uh, monitoring, um, all that good jazz. Make sure all the restrictions are in. Uh, make sure you're going to be following the restrictions, all that stuff. Uh, you would do with the departure briefing. You verify your weather. Make sure nothing is abnormal. And if there, if it is, what would, what are you going to do to make sure um, your situation doesn't come, get out of hand? Like, what kind of procedure do you need to follow? Um, what kind of safety precautions, all that good jazz. You know what a takeoff briefing normally covers. I'm not going to be covering covering it, to be honest. I will not be covering it because I can't make a tutorial on it. Because um, I, my, I myself don't really do it, and I'm not very good at it, at it myself. I think this is really something that a real pilot definitely would have to cover. Um, something I would not want to cover. After the takeoff briefing, there are a couple double checks that um, you would do in the real plane, and that is the flight recorder. So we set the ground control here to on, and you want to verify the, um, at this point um, that the DFDAU and the uh, DFDR lights are extinguished, which are I believe in these two switches here. If they are extinguished, the flight recorder is op operating normally. Once that is checked, we'll continue with the fuel quantity. So if you would still be refueling, or no, sorry, if you were still refueling at the point of doing the overhead scan, but refueling is now completed, you would now verify that the fuel is loaded. So you see 16.4 tons here is checked, and you would double check it with the indications. Once that's completed, you can set your cabin sign or your seatbelt signs to on and set the fuel pumps all to normal or to auto. So that's what you would do at this point, if not already done so. And this is the time where you can around expect the load sheet. In fact, you could even expect it a little bit earlier or maybe even a little bit later. But around this time is a good time to get the load sheet. And uh, this is where we have it here and this is where we're going to use it. Our zero fuel weight that says via the load sheet is 115.5, CG is 30.1, and our fuel on board is 16.4. So we're going to go into the, uh, the flight plan B page, which we're, um, not flight plan B, sorry, init B page, which we're already on by default um, because we've been on it before. And we're going to double check both these, all these sides. So taxi, we're going to plan on using uh, 0 0.4 and f uh, of tons for taxi today. Alternate is calculated depending on if you actually have your alternate put in the init A page. Extra, we're going to double check, but we're going to double check that once we get all this information updated. So 16.4 is entered and checked. 111.5, I believe, was the actual zero fuel weight that we have, which it is. And we're going to put that in. Okay, sorry. Um, before we put that in, you would actually put in this. Okay, let me go back. 
Um, to be 100% realistic, since I've been doing it this, the entire time, so this 111.8 has is the zero fuel weight that was calculated for us via the OFP. If you thought, guys still don't know what the OFP is, it is our flight plan, our um, operating flight plan that we've made by PFPX, or if you use Simbrief, by Simbrief. If the uh, if your OFP, uh, so if once you get your load sheet, you want to put in the zero fuel weight of the load sheet in here and you want to double cross or you want to cross check this with zero fuel weight that has been planned you want to make sure that these two values are not crazy out of sync um obviously they will they could be if a few passengers for in the passenger variant or if some of the cargo is not coming along or if there's too much coming along you could obviously this value is not always 100 percent right to this but if it is within limits go ahead and enter it update it and check your takeoff gross weight it is 127.5 and this should be perfectly uh, checked um, now it doesn't do on the okay. It doesn't check on the load sheet. Maybe there's something they can add in the future, and you can you can you'll see the takeoff gross weight calculation here. But the takeoff gross weight via the load sheet should be identical, or actually the opposite, or actually the other way around. The takeoff gross weight, um, to, according to the NED B page, should be identical to the load sheet. If it is off by like 0.1, that's fine. But more than that, should not be is not correct. So that's what you want to check after putting that in. And the next thing we're going to put in is our CG, which is 30.1 according to our load sheet. With the updated values here and there, so once you put in this value, you can update these values. Check your extra fuel time, um, which is checked with the flight plan, and you want to, again, double check the flight levels um, for the flight. I'm going to go back to the next page, and uh, that is all entered. Once once all that data is entered, all the predictions, all the flight plan predictions um, in the flight plan page should be now calculated um, with times and altitudes and all that stuff, at least accurately. Um, and it has actually calculated earlier when we put in a estimated zero fuel weight. Um, it actually did put in predictions already, but now that our data is up to date, um, this should be more accurate. And now that time has passed, this should be more accurate as well, according to our current time. Once that is checked, let's go to takeoff performance page and we're going to do the takeoff performance page next. So we'll see you in part three um, because now our pre-flight is pretty much completed and we're now going to go to the before start procedures and that is where part three comes into play. Thank you guys so much for watching to this point. If you guys have watched every single minute of, this, of these two videos, you guys are absolute legends. I hope you guys enjoyed it so far. If you have, let me know. If there's anything you would want me to change in future tutorials because I... Every tutorial I'm going to do in the future probably is going to be this detailed. It uh, depends on how much know how much I know about the aircraft. Um, but yeah, if you have any suggestions or if you really like what I did so far, please let me know. That'd be really helpful because I did I do put a lot of work into this. So um, yeah, we'll see you in part three with the before start procedures.